Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. In this podcast, I'll help you develop a stronger sense of self, develop firmer boundaries, and also learn how to lean into the gentle promptings of the Holy Spirit who can help you navigate life. My purpose is to help you get free from the emotional baggage that weighs you down so that you can be fully alive and engaged in life. My media includes audiobooks, self-help books, videos, and this podcast. Just a reminder before we get into today's episode that this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to help you with your concerns. Today I'm sharing excerpts from an interview I did for the Christian Readers community. I'm being interviewed by Faith, who is actually in Africa, and she interviews authors from different parts of the world. So I will give you a heads up. There's a few spaces at the beginning where the audio is a tiny bit challenging, and then it seems to be fine after that. So I hope you'll be patient to get through to where it corrects itself. So today we're going to be talking about my book, Anxiety, Depression, and Helplessness. So we will touch on the topic of learned helplessness, and then we get into more issues with self-care, guilt, ideas about self-criticism, and the ways to begin to think differently about some of these topics that seem to create guilt instead of freedom and joy. So here's today's episode. Hello, reader. Thank you for joining us. This is the Christian Readers Community Podcast. Dr. Tony Cooper is a psychologist, author, and public speaker. Since 1986, she has been teaching adults the strategies to grow emotionally, build healthy relationships, heal from trauma, and experience God at a deeper level. She has served as a college instructor, conference speaker, and teacher of continuing education for mental health professionals. She's the author of seven books that help people hear the voice of the Lord, correct distortions in their thinking, build confidence in how to study the Bible, and break into the blessings of God. Dr. Cooper is in private practice in Ohio and enjoys pickleball, hiking, and ballroom dancing. Hello, everyone, and welcome or welcome back to the Christian Readers community. I'm Faith, and I'm here with Dr. Tony Cooper. Welcome to the show, Dr. Tony Cooper. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so I read this beautiful book you wrote. You know, I've read so many books on self-help. But yours is one of those books that did not just motivate or inspire, but it was very informative and it gave actionable steps that things to do. So you didn't just inspire the reader, but you told you gave the reader actionable steps to take to carry out and overcome that particular situation so i i've been a psychologist and i've worked with people for decades so i just sort of put in simple steps hey this is how you do it the book has so many actionable steps that you can take so without wasting much time let's go let's dive in and talk about your book anxiety depression helplessness then the subtopic or subtitle is keys to break free keys to break free yeah keys to break free so please um tell us about the book one of the things that i've noticed year after year working with people is that many people want to change but they don't know how and i just started to notice different things that cause people to get stuck that even as believers, people of faith, that they have trouble accessing their faith. They have trouble kind of overcoming uh, depression. They get bogged down in anxiety, but especially 
there is a concept called learned helplessness. And I really got fascinated by that concept of learned helplessness. And I found that as I explained it to people, it really sort of helped the lights to come on and they could start to many times take steps forward again. So can I explain what learned helplessness is? Please go ahead. Okay. So one of the best ways to explain learned helplessness is to give an example. And this is not a diagnosis, but it's more of a phenomenon. So if you know anything about the way that baby elephants are trained for the circus, the way that they do it is they tie that baby elephant's leg to a tree or to a pole or something that won't move. So that every time that baby elephant tries to move, it's pulled back. And so it learns after a while, there's no use trying. You just stay where you are and that's it. So then by the time an elephant becomes an adult that weighs thousands of pounds, you can keep that adult in one place just by a rope around the leg. It doesn't even have to be tied to anything. So what this tells us is that even if you believe and have very strong faith in God, and even if you have very strong faith for other people, that if too many things happen to you too early in life, or if too many things happen all at once later in life, we can get sort of stuck where we stop having hope that things can be different. So that is kind of the basis for the book. There's a point you made. You made lots of points, but let's talk about this particular one first. You said maybe it's not bad to be selfish sometimes. When you talk about being selfish and being a Christian, okay, because... Because we know that yes. um, Christianity is all about sacrifice, sacrifice, putting others first before you. A good example is, of course, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So tell us about when you talked about, I mean, what do you mean when you, when you tell a child of God, a Christian, to be selfish sometimes? Well, the, the way I look at it isn't so much as selfish as self-care. That women especially neglect self-care and they think that that's what God wants for them. Um, so if we look at Jesus, he would go to Mary and Martha and Lazarus's house. And as far as I can tell, a lot of times he went there to eat and to relax and to be with his friends. As far as I can tell, he wasn't necessarily healing anybody or teaching or he was just being human. And we know that because when Martha complained that Mary wasn't helping her, he said, basically, leave her alone. (laughs) So Mm. it was... It was good for them to sit and relax. Another example is if you look at the book of Genesis, where God created the earth in six days, and on the seventh day he rested. I don't think God was tired. So our example is there is time for work and there is time for rest. And then also, if you look at the life of Jesus, there were times that he sent his disciples away and he went off by himself. Now, a lot of that time was to pray, but it was also he was giving, giving, giving. And Jesus was God, but he also was in a human body and human bodies have to be they have to get sleep. They have to get food. They have to get water. So if we are not balanced in taking care of ourselves, not selfish, but if we don't take care of ourselves sooner or later, our stress will cause us to get sick or our lack of sleep 
and our lack of relaxation, our bodies will wear out. And again, we're more likely to get sick. So there is a balance. God created us spirit, soul, and body. And that's something I talk about in the book that we know to develop our spiritual life and our souls are our relationships. But if we are not taking care of all three dimensions, because he gave us all three dimensions, if we are out of balance, if our appetites control us, if our relationships control us, then we will not be in balance. We will not be listening to the Holy Spirit. We will go from crisis to crisis. If we die young, then we can't really serve God or people if we have worn our bodies out and and we're we're too ill, we're too tired, we're too stressed. So it's it's really a balancing act. And it's really not good for other people who are close to us. It's not good for them if we are always doing for them. It sort of teaches them to be selfish. And it teaches them that not to look to God, but it teaches them to look to us. So it's a matter of balance, but this is a mistake women especially make. Wow. Let's talk about, you know, another relatable topic, another related topic to this one, self-deprivation. Like you, you praise others. You're very kind to others, but you're very critical of yourself any little mistake you make you know you you spoke about it in your book yeah some people some people will say that it's important for them to be like that because because it helps them keep themselves in line keep themselves in check so tell us what's the disadvantage and the danger of living such a life so for me that is more it's borderline like perfectionism. Um, Some people think it's humility, but that's not my understanding. If we are self-critical, then again, our focus is self. If we are not able to enjoy the strengths that we have developed or enjoy the strengths that God has given us, then C.S. Lewis called that a false humility. It's not, it's not a balanced view of ourselves. And I don't think we're going to have much joy if we live in too much self-criticism. Now, we should be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And I know for me, when I'm getting a bad attitude, when I say something I'm not supposed to, I feel the Holy Spirit, you know, saying, uh, uh, uh. And then I need to like, okay, repent of that or stop what I'm about to say. So it's the Holy Spirit that keeps us in check. It is not our own self-criticism. And many times self-criticism comes out of some kind of rejection earlier in life. So how does being positive about yourself, about people around you, how does it help? Well, I think we have more joy if we are If we're living in a state of gratitude in terms of what God has done for us, if we are looking for the positive in other people, and if we are thankful for, you know, the things going on in our lives and we're not unduly focused on what's wrong with us, the the Holy Spirit is faithful to help us keep growing. If we're reading the word of God, the word of God is going to prick your heart when you know this is, you know, this is a bad attitude I have. This is something the Lord doesn't want me to do. He will keep moving us towards glory to glory, it says in 2 Corinthians. He moves us from strength to strength. We will be more joyful. People will be drawn to us because the presence of God is more obvious. Whereas when we are focused on pushing ourselves down, then again, the focus is self. And we are not being driven by the Holy Spirit. We are not driven by our spirit. We're being controlled by our intellect or by our emotions. Your biography says that you are 
a psychologist and an author and a public speaker so how much of an experience did you draw from your work when you were writing this book um it's i would have to say to be completely honest that there's this intertwining of the things that god has had to work on in me with the things that i have studied with the the experience i've had helping people get out of you know problems to get out of the holes you know to help them escape from the pit whatever the pit is for them that it's been it's 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 a tapestry that god has created for me so some of it is things i've had to do myself some of it is things that i've have learned this seems to help lots of people and um things i've studied trying to figure out you know like why does this happen why is this a problem or ask it sometimes the lord just gives me a strategy like i'll i'll just wake up with an idea maybe some of you are like that too where you get inspired you wake up with this is how i'm going to do that or this is how i'm going to write this chapter that i i really felt like each of the books i've written i have felt like they were an assignment from god and i have my own podcast and every episode i've done i believe the lord i felt directed by the lord this needs people need to hear about this and then i i've had so many years of experience that i have lots of files and things or i've been studying the word of god since i became a christian um when i was a teenager so that's a lot of years i won't say how old i am and so there there's <laughs> as 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 we deposit things in in our well as we read the word of god as we pray as we get to know jesus as our friend that over time in our life experiences the well can become very deep and very rich and if we keep confessing the things that we know aren't good that um they aren't pleasing to god they aren't good for us they aren't good for other people he keeps cleaning out that well and then we have water to give to other people on a daily basis people suffer from depression stress anxiety mental all sort of mental health issues this happens on a daily basis so besides your youtube channel and your podcast if someone wants to get in touch or check out some other resources from you where would they go or how would they do, be able to do that well if you go to my website drtonycooper.com it will show you the links to my videos to my podcast to my books I have a blog with about a dozen different topics and prayers of things that come up all the time. I just posted one on how to survive a breakup. Uh different things that help people who have just gone through a breakup. So it's like like you said faith, thank you. I try to keep it very very practical. This has been a nice and a beautiful conversation with you. And I hope that when I invite you next time you'd be willing to come again. I would love to do that, Faith. Thank you so much. And I love the music that goes with your podcast. Ah. Oh. Is <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. It's just a background sound. <laughs> It's so like Thank fun you. though. It makes it fun. <laughs> Yeah, I actually the first time I started recording, I listened to it and I listened to it without the background song while I was editing it and it was like, oof, I could sleep off while listening to this. So I just thought, well, let's give it something. <laughs> so that was the reason for the background song. <laughs> But thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. I really enjoyed this. Yeah, me too. Me too. And I really hope to have you back here um sometime soon. That would be great. I have other books I can talk about, so. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you so much, Dr. Cooper. And uh everyone, thank you. I do hope you've enjoyed this as much as I did. I'm saying stay safe, stay blessed, and bye-bye everyone. Thank you so much for listening.